We'll be moving now into hyperbolas. I just wanted to show you this thing here in GeoGebra. GeoGebra is <clears throat> what I've been using to kind of display some of the conic sections. So if you were to pull this program up and type in the equations you get, you're going to see the graphs and you can do things like put a grid up and you can put axes up so you can you can see where all the points are supposed to be. But here, I plotted five points here and GeoGebra has this tool called conic through five points. And so as you can see here, if you put the five points like this, you have an ellipse. If you were to arrange this in a way where all of these are perfectly in a circle, you'd have a circle. Now, if I keep arranging this though, you start to see this where you have two sides. It's kind of like the ellipse turns inside out and becomes two parabolas. And this is called the hyperbola. Now, the important thing about hyperbolas, um, one of the important things is hyperbolas are like parabolas in which they have focuses, foci. There's going to be a foci on the inside of the curves on each of these sides. And now we should probably get into how we're going to actually graph it. So I've started drawing a uh, hyperbola here. We have a box here that normally you would have an ellipse inside of. And so we still have this A on either side, which when with an ellipse would have been the semi-major axis. So personally, I still call this the semi-major axis. But what we're going to have instead now is we're going to be having a hyperbola coming out in this direction. And so taking a look at this equation here, I wrote it below. This is the equation for a hyperbola. And the a under is still under the x squared. That's your semi-major axis. The big difference here is that instead of adding together, you're going to be subtracting. Now, this right here is for horizontal hyperbolas. Okay. Now, it's like the, uh, the parabolas. If you want it to be actually tilting up or to the side, you have to swap your x and your y. So if you would want, this one is going to be opening up to the sides, but if you wanted it to be opening up and below, you would swap this so that y squared and x squared are switched around. And so you would have y squared all over b squared minus x squared over a squared equals 1. That would be for a vertical version. You do the same things, except the vertices, the opening up, and the foci are going to be in the other direction. So in this case, we do have a height here, which is b. And so you have this box that you're going to draw first, which kind of sets um, how far apart your hyperbola sections are going to be from each other. And I put 0, 0 here because um, unless you're doing a translation, we'll do them later, it's going to be centered at 0, 0. So when you see your equation, you're going to plot out this box, and then you're going to draw vertical lines through this box. Sorry, diagonal lines through this box. Once you have all of these dotted lines in place, this is going to be your vertex. It's going to approach these dotted lines and just never touch it. So there's a lot of important relationships going on here. First of all, the uh, one of the things here is going to be the, the foci on both sides here. Foci are still going to be C0, but what I imagine is kind of like instead of the foci being inside of the ellipse, they've been kind of pushed out past the boundary of an ellipse, and now they're on the outside. And so if you have a foci of C, that's going to be C from the center. And to find this, the, th the equation you're going to use is just going to be the Pythagorean theorem. If you have A and B, you just use Pythagorean theorem, that will give you how far your focus should be from the center. And so it's not like the ellipses where you have to change it depending on which orientation you are. You just use that. The other important thing is uh, these dotted lines here are called your asymptotes. And uh, you can figure out the actual line equation for these. It's going through 0, 0. 
And we know that we're going to go over A and up B. And so you already have a slope here. The asymptote lines are going to be rise over run, which would be B over A X. And because it's going through the center, you won't have a B like a Y intercept to add on. So this is the positive one, the asymptote that's going up and to the right. The other asymptote is going to be y equals negative b over a x. And again, this is if we haven't uh, moved the whole situation anywhere. So that's centered at 0, 0. OK, that's a lot. So let's do an example where we are given an equation and we have to graph the hyperbola. So we're going to do x squared all over 9 minus y squared all over 4 equals 1. So we know right away that this is going to be horizontal because x is subtracting y. That was the horizontal version. So it's going to look like this in the end. Uh, the next thing we're going to think about is that a is going to be 3 and b is going to be 2 based on what's underneath x and y. So as I'm drawing my graph here, it's actually going to be a semi-major axis of 3 in each direction. And so this spot right here is going to be 3, 0. And going back 3, you're going to have negative 3, 0. And now I know that the height of this box is going to be 2 up and 2 down. So I'm going to put my dotted line through the diagonals, dotted line through the diagonals. And I can actually, at this point, be drawing my hyperbolas. So you have the lines approaching the asymptote dotted lines. They hit the vertex, and then they go off in the other direction. Okay, so there's a few other things you might want to find. They might ask for the, the, line, the asymptote line for this. And so since we know that we're going over 3 up 2, these lines have a slope of 2 thirds. So one of the intercept, the asymptote lines is y equals 2 thirds x. The one going down is just negative 2 thirds x. And the other thing we don't have yet is the focus. The focus is this dot out here and then another dot out here. Okay, so but we got to figure out how far that is. And so if you remember, we use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Sorry, my writing is just kind of all over the place. Let me move this over here. Now a was 3, b was 2, and we just work that out to get c. c is going to be, when you work that out, the square root of 13. So my focus is going to be the square root of 13 from the origin all the way over, and also negative square root of 13 back from the origin. Okay, we have all of our points. We have the equations for the asymptote lines, and it's centered around 0, 0. That would be our graph. Now the idea here is, using what you know about translations, you could take this object and shift all of these points to the appropriate spot if they gave you an equation like that. So here's one for you to try. This is where they give you just some of the information. And using this, uh, what you should do is draw a picture first and then try to find the equation based off of the picture. So you should pause the video and give it a try. OK. So I always draw a picture of these kinds of situations. Now, it's not saying it here, but it is centered at the origin. So if that threw you off, just pause the video again, try it, and make sure that everything's centered around the origin. Now, it has a focus at 0, negative 5, which means the foci are going to be above and below the origin. So already I know that my equation is going to be the version where y subtracts x. I'm still trying to find a and b here, um, but I know y is first. So I'm going to start uh, thinking if this is 0, 0, I'm going to have my focus down here at 0, negative 5 and my other focus up here at 0, 5. Okay, and now one thing I know is that the semi-minor axis is 6, and therefore the, the length horizontally here is going to be 3 in both directions. Okay, 
And we have a certain height here that we have to figure out. But we need to figure that out using the Pythagorean identity. For hyperbolas, you just use the regular Pythagorean identity. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the semi-minor axis, which is the one going left to right, if that's 3, we're trying to figure out b squared equals c squared. c squared is going to be 5 squared here. And working that out, we're going to have 9 plus b squared equals 25. And if you know your Pythagorean triples, b is going to be 4. All right, so the height is going to be 4 above and 4 below, which means these things that open up this way, the vertices are going to be 0, 4 and 0, negative 4. I'm going to slide this down just a little bit, make sure that it is that we have enough space. All right, so we're going to draw dotted lines here. And we're going to have kind of a picture of like this. Okay, very cool. All right, now, um, based off of this information, we have everything we need. We have our y, our b, and we have our a for our x. So since y is 4, we're going to do 16. We're going to square 4 to get that number. And under x, we have to do a squared, which is 3 squared, which is 9. And so here we have it. That is our equation. Now, one last thing here before we end this video. Uh, you're going to see things like shifts. Oops. So for example, you might have this right here. Now, when you graph this, the only thing you're really going to change is the center point. And then once you change your center point, you're going to have to just adjust the points around it. So what I mean by that is the center here is positive 2, negative 3. So I just put 2, negative 3 at the center of my box whenever I'm doing these graphs. Now, this is not a very nice a. We're going to have a equals to the square root of 12 and b equals 5. So I know square root of 12 over and back, you're going to have the edge of your boxes here. And they're going to be your vertices because this is a horizontal hyperbola. But the way you can just write this is, well, if you start at 2 and go to the right square root of 12, you have 2 plus root 12, negative 3. And if you go backwards, it's going to be 2 minus root 12, negative 3, over here. And then when you make your box, you can make sure that it is 5 tall on each side. And then... Once you have your box, you actually have everything you need to graph your hyperbola. It's just, it's just not going to be centered around 0, 0.